All right, so today we are going to look at some different rods that we used. Uh, and again, if you watched our videos and followed along with our uh, adventures, I'll call them, or our journeys, uh, you know that we, we've used a lot of different gear, a lot of different types of rods and reels and baits and uh, terminal tackle and things like that. And again, this is through carp fishing, this is through catfishing, this is through uh, pan fishing, it's through everything that we've done. We like to try a lot of different gear and just kind of see what works best for for us and then share that with all of you folks that are watching so um kind of what we have landed on last year we use a lot of the shakespeare and the ugly stick products um i have i'm trying to think now i should have thought of before i think i'm running almost all gx2s on my carp gear and my um well i'll call it my catfishing gear but it's more just kind of like your smaller channel catfish and largely my bait fish rods. So when we go out to catch um, bullhead and things like that, I use a, a smaller version of a GX2 as well. But that's really what I have landed on in the last year to year and a half probably of fishing. Uh, they have done extremely well for me. They're very rugged, they're very reliable, they have not broken. The backbone is, is good, they cast well, and I'm really, really a big fan. Brent has tried some of the big waters um, and he's had really good success with them. Uh, as we talk about the, the rods today, we'll go ahead and we'll try to link some videos uh, that will show you of those rods in action. We won't show you the full video, just kind of little bits and pieces and clips of, uh, of us using the actual rod. But I just want to highlight the couple that I've used this year that I've really enjoyed and I've had really good success with. So uh, with that being said, I've got two different options here to show you. Um, let's start with this big one first. <laughs> like I said, it's cold outside, so I'm downstairs in the basement. And uh, this rod in particular is causing some problems because it's the nine foot rod. This is the Ugly Stick GX2. I'm gonna see how much stuff I can knock down as I pivot it around here. There we go, now you'll be able to see it. This is the Ugly Stick GX2. Um, made by Shakespeare. This has been a very, very good rod for me. Uh, this nine foot rod is the one that I use for carp fishing. Um, the nine foot allows me to get a really, really nice long cast if I want to, but it also, if you only want to cast, you know, 20 or 25 yards, cause that's the hot spot or the drop off or something, you can do that just the same. Um, we use, I should, I, I should say I use um, method leads that range anywhere from 15 grams up to about 50 grams with this. And that might be on the high side of what the rod can handle, but I have not had any problems with it yet, obviously. Um, so it casts really well. It's got a good backbone. The hook set on this has been really, really good. It's a medium action rod. So it's, it's got a lot of play to it, um, which is good for the carp fishing. It's got enough backbone to get a hook set um, if you need to. Granted, with the Herrigs and things that we use, you don't have to have a bass action style hook set, but the medium action nine foot still gives you a good hook set and it gives you um, good sensitivity to kind of feel what's going on. So this rod is rated for, let me see here, uh, it's the nine foot medium action. It's rated for four to 20 pound line, four to 20 pound line, and that is uh, monofilament. What I have on here now, I believe, is the Trilene Big Game. Uh, it's either 15 or 20 pound monofilament. I can't remember which it was. I need to put some new line on. But um, this has done really well for me. I, I, think, it's, I think it's 20, but uh, I'll check later. That's irrelevant right now, at least. So currently I have this nine foot GX2 paired up with a uh, Daiwa Regal 4500. See if I can, that's, of course the spool is blocking it. Anyways, this is the Daiwa Regal 4500 BRI, which is the, the, the bite and run uh, reel. And it's still dirty from last year, as you can probably see, but uh, it has a secondary drag to flip, to engage, to let the line come out. Um, adjustable drag. I mean, it, it's a really good re uh, reel. And I'm not, this video is not about the reel, but it has been pretty good. I think they actually discontinued it but uh, but it has been a really good one for us. 
check our videos out. I know Brent's put together several really good videos on other reels that he has uh, used throughout the years, as well as some rods. But like I said, he uses the, uh, the, uh, the Big Water rod, same brand, just different model of the Big Water. And then he's used several others that have actually worked quite nicely through the years. So uh, check those out along with the reels, but I won't talk about this reel any more than I already have. So um, that's the nine foot option. Again, this is my carp rod. Uh, it works really well. No problems with it whatsoever. And it's caught some pretty nice fish. Um, and like I said in the beginning of this video, I do have this in other sizes. This is the six foot version, I do believe. It's either the six or the six and a half. Oh, it's the six and a half foot. So uh, again, this is the Augustic GX2 uh, by Shakespeare. And this is the six and a half version, medium action. Line wise, it takes six pound to 15 pound monofilament. Uh, this was paired up with a, um, a carp runner, uh, NGT, I believe it was, uh, reel, purchased from Big Carp Tackle. Uh, and it came pre-spooled with, I believe this is either 10 or 12 pound monofilament, which, you know, I've got a lot of reels before that have been pre-spooled and the line's pretty junky, but this one's not too bad. So uh, if you do look at reels and you want something cheaper that still works pretty well, that wasn't too bad. Again, this is not a reel video, it's a rod video. So uh, six and a half foot ugly stick GX2. The reason I purchased this rod at this length was so it could fit diagonally in the bed of my pickup and still leave room for other gear uh, so it doesn't slide around and hurt the rod itself. This is a two-piece rod, and I should have said that about my other, my nine-foot section. I'm sorry, my nine-foot rod is also a two, a two-piece rod. Um, I like the two-piece. You know, it's convenient because you only got to put it together in one joint and less places for it to break or fail. Uh, the the nine-foot, the nine-foot rod in two pieces. Even when you break it down, it's still a little bit cumbersome. But that's that's just what you're going to get with a nine-foot rod. Uh, this one does break down. The joint is right there, so you can pull it apart, put it back together. Uh, but I like the six and a half foot because it fits, like I said, diagonally in the bed of my pickup, and it just stays there. Uh, as you can see, this is still hooked up from last year. It's got a uh, a small little hook on it that's actually dull, which is probably why I wasn't hook setting the fish. But anyways, uh, this is my bait setup or my smaller catfish setup. So it's got a sinker slide on it. To be able to hook you know i think i use a lot of one half ounce weights um all the way up to one ounce or two ounce i believe I've, I've thrown on this i can't remember i've never run into a huge issue with uh having too much weight on these gx2 rods they've always been really good for me but this was the setup that i used for bait fishing last catching bullhead so the six and a half version of the Ugly Stick GX2. Again, we're gonna link um, a, a couple of videos here or splice into a couple of videos of this actually in action. Um, the guys and gals and anybody watching this, uh, if you're looking for, this is my opinion after you know some years of use, and I've used Ugly Stick rods for many years, bass fishing and other things, but the last couple of years for carp, and catfish and bullhead and baitfish and things like that. These Ugly Stick GX2s have done very, very well. Uh, and the other great thing about them is that they're relatively inexpensive. I think my nine foot, my nine foot rod, I actually bought a couple of them at Walmart and I wanna say they were either 35 or $40. And this six and a half footer, I don't remember where I bought to be quite honest. Um, I think it was Cabela's or Bass Pro and uh, they were right around $30 a rod. So um, in the world of fishing gear, that's relatively inexpensive and they have lasted really well. Since I use monofilament, the eyelets are holding up really well. I know Brent had some issues earlier in the year. He uses a lot of braid line and uh, some of the eyelets on some of his rods were getting chewed up by that, that tough abrasion of the braid. Uh, I think he has done a couple of videos on that but uh, the mono has done plenty, plenty well for me at least in, in the locations that I fish and the type of fish that I'm using. So seriously, check out these Ugly Stick GX2s. 
they're really, really good rods for the price. Uh, they've done well. They've caught really nice fish and a lot of them. Um, so that's where it's at. Uh, if you have any questions about it, I would suggest just going online, just doing a Google search or whatever your search engine is for the Ugly Stick GX2. There's so many different models. You, you know, they go all the way down to like a four and a half foot version and all the way up to the nine foot version. Um, different actions, you know, medium, medium lights, light actions. I do have a light action. I don't know why I didn't grab it. I've got an, an ultra light action rod as well with a tiny little micro spinner that I use for early season tan fish. Again, we've got a video on that we can throw up here. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal little ultralight rod that is. But uh, just whatever your needs are, it seems like they have a rod in this fashion that you're going to be able to utilize. Um, I'll say that at least from the Midwestern perspective, you know, the catfishing and the carp and the things that we do here, they're going to have you covered. So check them out. Very affordable. Um, you know, everything nowadays is kind of hard to come by. Um, just with how shipping is and how um, product availability and things like that. It seems like a lot of stuff's back ordered. Um, regardless, keep an eye out for these because they're going to serve you well. So with that being said, check them out online. If you have any questions about them, let us know in the comments below. Watch our previous videos on the rods. There are some and, and I'm sure Brent's going to link some and splice some in here. Um, and I think they're going to answer a lot of your questions and you'll be able to see actually how they work. So. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, I say this, I close almost all of my videos with this. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited for, for, for what's to come. You know, that's the good thing about being a true outdoorsman is because during fishing season, you fish and you love it. And then towards the end of it, you start gearing up for, towards, uh, to, for hunting season. And then you get excited about that. And then it's hunting season. And then the next thing you know, you're looking forward to fishing season again. So it's just, it's just the, the never ending cycle, but regardless, I'm really looking forward to, to what we're gonna do this year. Um, praying that we get some rain so we can get back out on the river some more. We didn't do much bankful fishing last year and that, that hurt us because um, we just love to do that. And we love making those videos and bringing those videos for you guys. So hit that subscribe button, give us a follow because we're gonna do everything we can come this spring and summer to give you guys and gals a lot of really cool stuff. We're gonna do a lot of fishing and we're gonna use a lot of gear. So make sure to come along with us. Thanks for watching, take care and be safe.